Hi, my name is Shuraz Balolia. I'm the CEO of Grizzly Industrial Inc. As you know, I tinker a lot in my metalworking and woodworking shops. I'm getting to a point where I use a lot of these shell mill cutters for my South Bend milling machine that is behind us there. And this rack is getting full. So my plan today is to build a simple rack where I can lay out more of these, these uh, things that will hold R8 uh, shell mill cutters, end mill holders, and so on. Something similar to this, what I made for the lathe, where I can put uh, my live centers and my uh, drill chucks for the lathe. So let's go over to the bench where I have some of the parts cut out and we will show you the rest of the project. We've already milled the Bubinga pieces down. I've trimmed it all to size. I'm actually making two sets. There are two pieces. They're, they're slightly different in uh, dimensions, but I've got the pieces all cut out. I've got them in sets. I've got the, the matching one to this on the, in the vise here that I'm gonna be doweling next. But each one is marked, uh, so I know which way they're gonna be doweled and glued together. That's one, two, three, four. Same with that, five, six, seven, eight and these are just a little oversized. When I'm done gluing these pieces, I will trim them to final length and then I will run them over and put it all together with screws. Simple project. So I'm gonna be drilling three holes into this. I've already drilled the first hole, the pilot hole, which uh, was done setting it here. Now I've got this jig set up where I'm, I'm going to just stop this and drill it in the middle and then I'll go over and do my last hole over here. So that's all set up, touching, everything's touching, it's good. Alrighty. So we've got this hole done. Then we'll go onto this. Use that as a guide, go back in and I'll do my last corner hole. Well, make sure that it, it touches properly, otherwise it's not gonna line up on the mating piece. So make sure everything is good. Touching, push it in. This is in. Nothing's moving. One. And we're done with the three holes. I'll go ahead and do the mating part of that and then I'll put dowels in there and glue it together. As you can see, all the burn marks are gone. All my pencil markings are all cleaned up. That's the beauty of having a white belt sander. It just makes it easy. This is uh, now at 150 grit, roughly. That's the belt that's in there. I'm gonna go ahead and sand it later on to about 500 grit. All right, so I finished cutting these. I've pre-drilled the holes, countersunk them, and also drilled the holes for the holders and also go ahead and sanded it, rounded off the edges, eased off the edges. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble this. This is a nice uh, router pad, we call them. Uh, it's pretty sticky, it saves your bench from getting scratched up and also holds uh, whatever it is you're working on pretty firmly. We're gonna have one open end obviously so we can store things underneath. So now I'll put the top on. And I'll start off with one screw in the back and then I'll do the sides and then come back and do the back again. And you can see everything else lines up. Let's pull this in a little bit. 
and make it flush. This is bobinga, it's gonna explode when I put oil on it. So let's put some oil on it, see what it looks like. So what I've got is I've laid down some freezer paper because I don't want the oil dripping onto the rubber pad or on the bench. Uh, what I use is band mat. It's really nice finishing oil for furniture. Wow, look at that. Look at that, oh, it just came to life. The first coat will get soaked in. I'll, I'll end up doing probably three coats. And on the second and third coat, I'll probably rub it in with, uh, with uh, 500 grit paper. So it works any of that, fills in any pores and whatnot. You wanna do all the exposed edges when I get to the second and third coat, especially the third coat, it will, it won't soak up as much and so that's why you kind of rub it in with the, with the sandpaper as well. Look at that, it just, it just sucked it in. I love working with Bubinga, it's really just a great, Hard, really hard, but really dense. And it finishes beautifully. You can finish this like glass if you want. Normally I use cheesecloth for applying, but this is fine, it works just fine. This thing doesn't leave any lint on it. It's a, it's a good uh, towel, really thick. You can't really tear it by hand. It's a special industrial use paper towel. It doesn't scratch up the wood or doesn't leave any lint either. Very nice. What you need to do is make sure that any excess oil that's not been sucked into the wood needs to be wiped off about after about 20, 15, 20 minutes after you put the oil on, just so it doesn't cake up and, and dry up and foam little, little wellies there. So uh, that's what I'm doing right now. And then I'll wait a little bit and then I'll put a second coat on and then a third and then we'll be done. All right, so I've completed these two holders for my RA tooling. Uh, as you can see, they turned out pretty well. Uh, this one's for me. This one's for Dave, our engineer. I'm sure he'll be very happy with it. This one's got nine holes in it. Mine's got eight holes in it. Uh, just the configuration was different. I've got uh, everything from a drill chuck to uh, fly cutters to a metric collet holder, and I've got room for more. I really enjoyed making these pieces and I hope you did too. Uh, if you like plans for them, they are at the link below. Thank you very much.